Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Saints were on the practice field for OTAs on Tuesday, and afterwards Derek Carr met with reporters. And we already saw rookie minicamp, but this is the first time we got to see Carr out there running around in a Saints uniform with his teammates playing. And after practice, Derek Carr met with the media and talked about this sort of next phase of his career and what it's meant for him. The foundation and the culture is already laid. I just got to come in and be me, and I, I've just been a fly on the wall. Being encouraging and being a leader and doing those things when I need to be and saying something when I need to say something, but I've honestly just enjoyed my time just getting to be me again. And, uh, you know, I think um, being in this building has been a, you know, it's been a, it's rejuvenated me. You know, it's been a breath of fresh air for me. You never wanted to, I never wanted to leave, you know, Las Vegas, never wanted to. Um, but life had different circumstances. But when I walked in this building after the last couple of months, I'm like, man, I'm glad I'm here. I miss, miss my friends, you know, obviously miss my teammates, but I just got to get used to that, these new colors. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to lie, walking out to practice was a little different. Uh, but, you know, I'll get used to it real soon. Did you hear what he said? It's rejuvenated me. Yeah, weird, different colors, different practice feel, new teammates, terminology, all that stuff. But he said, it's rejuvenated me. Think about any time in your life when, if you have any, whatever it is that you're competitive in doing, when a new challenge presents, it should get you pretty jazzed up. Like, whatever it is you do professionally or personally. I mean, you're a rec league softball player. And your teammates are like, yeah, man, hey, look, we don't have a spot for you. So you go catch on with a new team. You ain't going to be super jazzed about getting out there against your former squad. Like, there's something to it if you have those competitive juices. Like, any challenge that presents. I mean, I, look, I... I mean, I'll tell you personally, like just recently, obviously a lot of you know that I took on the PD role in, in, at, at 104.5 ESPN. I, like I am so fired up every day to wake up and tackle the challenge of how are we going to take this station we've grown for 13 years and pour gasoline on that fire for the next decade. Like I love, like that, that fires me up every day. So, I mean, that's just part of it. If you're Derek Carr, the real question though, is like, you can be fired up. But are, are you good enough? Um, here's another one from Derek Carr. So it's sort of speaking to that, that same uh, emotion going on right now. Today felt like day one, had a young center, hit my pinky, uh, all those kind of things. All those things that you need to wake you up that it's football time. <laughs> but yeah, today, today felt like day one. Uh, it's very... Smooth, very simple, but I thought we, I thought we executed. Uh, you know, I think it was a good start. But as soon as you have a good start, it's all about going up now. Wherever you set that bar now, you never want to go backwards. And so hopefully we can, we can keep pushing. We're, there's going to be things we're going to grow from and things I'm going to learn from and mistakes made and all that. But hopefully we just learn at a faster rate and just keep climbing. You know what? Uh, when, when I heard Derek Carr speak today, I started thinking of other examples in the NFL of guys that have done what Derek Carr is trying to do. Like the most obvious example, and we've talked about it a ton because it's recent, but it's it's what Matthew Stafford did, right? Stafford was drafted in the first round, first overall, by the Lions. He spent a decade in Detroit. They ultimately decided to move on. They trade him to the Rams, and year one he wins a Super Bowl. And not only did he win the Super Bowl, but he just had a, a resurgence of sorts. He threw for 4,800 yards. Uh, he had 41 touchdowns. Think about his last year in Detroit, 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns. He threw for 800 more yards and 15 more touchdowns. The juices got him going. And now, look, he was throwing a Cooper Cup and Odell and Van Jefferson and better players. But, but you understand the point. Like, it clearly motivated him. And so I was thinking of like other examples uh, similarly. And the one that kept coming to my mind was, was Kurt Warner. Warner's a little bit of a different path. And, and I know, I think, uh, like, Muse, we were talking off air. Like, you had mentioned um, like Jameis. Who were some of the other ones you mentioned? 
I mentioned the, uh, the possibility that Jameis had to do it. Oh, you threw out Breeze. Uh, Breeze, yeah. But in, in the point that I made was, I'm not so much talking about a guy in his mid-20s who's moving on like from his rookie contract to his next stop. I'm more talking about like a dude that's an established vet that's been around for a decade and made it in the next stop. Like, isn't Andy Dalton sort of the the antithesis of this, right? That's like, fair for sure. Yeah. You think of think of Andy Dalton and Matthew Stafford, right? Both were spent a decade with the team that drafted him. Dalton was beginning of round two, but uh, you know, Stafford was the first overall pick. But still, a decade in their place. They made the playoffs. Didn't have a lot of success. And then Stafford goes to the Rams, wins the Super Bowl. Dalton, Dal Dalton's done. Went to Chicago, went to Dallas, went to New Orleans. Now Carolina, four teams, four years. Like he's done. He's just done being any type of elite player. Stafford still had it, had it in him in L.A. I mentioned Kurt Warner. Warner won an MVP, won a Super Bowl, went to a couple of Super Bowls, greatest show on turf, all that stuff. The Rams let him go. Well, his next stop wasn't Arizona. His next stop was the Giants. And it didn't work out in New York. He was there for one year, was a backup, and then, then was gone to Arizona. And then he found that in Arizona, got Arizona to a Super Bowl. And that's one that I would say, and that was his second to last year in the league, threw for 4,500 yards. I mean, here's what he did in Arizona. Um, 2,700 yards, 1,300 yards, 3,400 yards, 4,500 yards, 30 touchdowns. It was his second to last year. And then 3,700 yards and 14 touchdowns, or uh, and 26 touchdowns, and he was done. But the point is, like, he found it again in Arizona. We talked about Brett Favre. Yeah. You know, the, the Packers, uh, look, we all know Brett's history in Green Bay. Then he ultimately went to the Jets. Um, they, went, they went to the postseason. But then he went to Minnesota for two years, and he was a game away from the Super Bowl, as we all know. And then his final season, it, it collapsed, and they were 4-13. and Or uh, not 4-13. Not and 13, They were 5-8, uh, and eight, excuse me. Uh, Peyton Manning. Had the injury. They draft Andrew Luck. 2011, they move on. Goes to Denver. I mean, Peyton had four seasons in Denver. Three of the four were incredible. He won the Super Bowl in the fourth season, but he went to two Super Bowls. He won two MVPs during his time in Denver. Um, he found it again. But I, are we looking at Brett Favre and Peyton Manning and Kurt Warner? We're looking at the Hall of Famers. Like, I don't think anybody's going to argue Derek Carr's a Hall of Famer. Right? Right. I mean, I think the Matthew Stafford comp is is the closest. I mean, is anybody? I mean, you might have some that would argue Matthew Stafford's a Hall of Famer, but I, I would have before the Super Bowl. Wouldn't Matthew Stafford? That's, that's the question. And Derek Carr really have been on the same plane? And as I've said so many times here, Derek Carr and Andy Dalton are on the same plane. Like, go look at them statistically. They are the same guy. Their their careers are the same. Yeah. Andy Dalton, it, it didn't work after he was done. So, which the the question is. For Derek Carr, is this rejuvenation going to lead the way that, that it did for Matthew Stafford, or is it going to go the way that it did for Andy Dalton? Or somewhere in between. I don't know. But that's going to be the fascinating part to watch with Derek Carr. Can, at, at 31 years old, he find that gear again to make him an elite player in a new place? Or were the Raiders right in saying, we think you're done? The Bengals were right. Andy Dalton is done. He is done being an elite player. They were right. They moved on, and look, it worked. We got Joe Burrow. It's it's worked just fine for Cincinnati. Detroit, you know, with Stafford. Well, look, they're they're trending in the right direction, and and the Rams got themselves a Super Bowl. Where do the Saints fall on that spectrum? Is the fascinating thing. But you hear Derek Carr say it. I feel rejuvenated. It feels like day one again. That's all great. Like you want that from a competitor. But can he physically still do it? And that's the story that's going to unfold as the season moves along. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.